Are you streaming? Oh yeah, if you go on twitch.tv.com. That doesn't actually have a .com on it, it's .tv. Oh no, it's not letting me, um, uh, I have to reset my Twitch password. Hold on, let me get into the stream, and once I've done resetting my password, I'll tell you what to do. Well, I won't tell you what to do. I'll give suggestions. But you shouldn't be, because that's called being a cop. Yeah, you should have every stat at max. Because you're right. Now, Almabek, I'm not great. Four six zero. Let me uh, hold on. Let me look. I finally got to log into my account, so now I just need to join your active stream. It says you're playing Absolver, by the way. Oh, uh, who? Uh, who's this stupid fuck? Why can I hear him? Oh, it's me. Oh yeah, if you can hear me, please rate um, uh, uh, if I'm your least favorite voice. If you say I'm not, you're lying to me. Also, I'm currently, I'm currently just, also, I'm currently just steaming like you're seeing like your steam thing. Like the, your, your, your steam, like the library page. Huh? Wow, it's eight degrees there, huh? Wow. It's past your bedtime, wow. I can hear my own voice, and it's so annoying. How do people listen to this shit?
Okay, so I think that you should have good everything. It, do it doesn't matter, it only does it when you alt-tab, so just don't alt-tab. So yeah, I'm, uh... Okay, you have two points left, right? So just go, I would go with, like, four. Oh no, that's not how I did it. And I did fine. Huh? I think you're better off just going with like 433 or something. Yeah, that's what I just said. <laughs> yeah, I think 433 is, is good. Like, yeah, you can be like four, four smart, three the other two, or but then this game is also gonna make you something else that you're not white. <laughs> That's why you have worse stats. <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna mute the stream so I don't have to listen to myself anymore. There we go, that's better. I don't know, I'm not on the page yet, because the stream has a delay. So basically, skills are interesting in how they work. I'm not gonna tell you how, though. Well... <laughs> yeah, but like uh, this is like being like a a, a Ben Shapiro on. I mean, it's also other things, so... Conceptualization? Yeah, I think that's work, so. Fallacy, fallacy! <laughs> yeah.
you know. Pick whatever you want, fam. Yeah, you t you understand uh, something, presumably. <laughs> yeah, kind of. It, yeah, it's cringe persuasion. Yeah. You pull out those facts and logic and you just destroy them. You do, you're, Dan, you have like another hour before you've reached woolly time. You can read the rest of them. Yeah, you won't have to read, because uh, you're illiterate, which is good. Uh. Yeah, this is why I just tell viewers to read shit themselves, like, get a job, you you stupid... You, you, unless you're nothing. blind, in which case, I'm um, uh, you're, I, you're not stupid. Uh, I apologize. If you're not blind, conscious you. from Vincini, No larger than a single grain of malt. You don't have to do anything anymore. It's your lizard brain talking. Never. Never. Ever. Never, ever, ever, baby. An inordinate amount of time passed. Why, think it? it is utterly void of struggle. No ex-wives are contained within it. An awareness creeps up on you. A mass lies hidden in your dead angle, soaking in some lurid acidic source. It's bloated and shameful. A ball of meat surrounding you. This is a terrible line of questioning, and it will only lead to more awareness of the meat. No, it's made by, like, Estonians or something. It's made by, like, Baltic Ex people. Ex-love. Ex-tenderness. It is foolish of you to resurface to Blinky, the loss. you're not a Baltic person. Not after all the damage you suffered to get here. Some of it irreversible. Stay. Sail with me through the abyss of allergic zone. Do you Existing really? is suffering. Good. Uh. You wouldn't like it if I told you what was back there. Why'd you think you had to bludgeon yourself into oblivion? Or did you not sense yourself marinating? Poured so much on yourself. Got a bit carried away, did we, Chef? Fear and apprehension. You should ask us out there first. My God. <laughs> yes, your one disco mother. There's this giant ball there. An evil ape. An evil ape so juking it well, out humans, on the board. More like you. No. You're infinitesimally small. You can't even make out it's a ball when you're joking it out. It's that large. Flying for resources. It's just a stupid expression you picked up somewhere. 
The part of the presentation you want to take home with you is this. You have to beat the other evil apes in the face. Or you lose. Yes, it is. And you drowned in that sadness a long time ago. You lost. The sound outside. You recognize it. It's a Caprice Camilla motor carriage. Hey, Denton, you know something really funny about this first room? If you if you have one of uh, physique, like one physical. You can die trying to get your tie off that lemma, like light fixture. This fan has two. I know this because switches. it happened. <laughs> One ends in a tiny fan, the other in a light bulb. A truly horrific necktie has somehow attached itself to one of the blades. You swoop up and catch the tie. Snap. It's released from the blade. Yeah, I think the full game is voiced now with the director. That's because the game did really well. They could afford to go back in and do voice acting. What you have in your hand is a truly hideous thick tie. With four or five I think that patterns. the whole thing is voiced now. The knot reminds you of a noose. Yeah, they constrict your testicles. So. Oh yeah, you can click on that yellow thing to have a thing happen if you didn't already. You hear I'm a jingle. And I can't see what you're doing. Keys are clinking in the pocket of your flare cut pant. It says whirling in rags on the aluminium key ring. There is a single key on the ring. The number one is etched on it. It should open the door. Walk out. Move out with your cock out. <laughs> I like how it sounded like you were saying why not I was saying. Go to your, just go to your bathroom. Just the way I like it. above a bent and broken sink. In a fierce discharge of masculine energy, someone has ripped half the faucet off. Hot water sprays from the base and steam covers the mirror. You cannot see yourself, just the outline of a man. This horrific monster. Suddenly, you realize you have no memory of the face that awaits you there, underneath the soft vapor. As you slowly reach your hand towards the surface of the mirror, Abort. You clearly have not thought this through. You won't like what you see there, and you will never unbecome it. I don't know. Possibly. Yeah, there is definitely something wrong with it. Where to even begin? Uh, even like the there mirror the dialogue is dubbed. That's actually really neat. Then the neat. swollenness. It's like there's an upholstery of alcohol underneath your skin. It's not. It's swollen and snail-like, wriggling between your fingers. Bet you are. Your nose feels like a small balloon Bulby in the nose, middle of Bulby your face. Nose. It hurts when you honk it, 
It doesn't appear to be a particularly tiny nose either. Not with all the drinks it's absorbed for you. Behold. You have no idea. Most attractive Estonia. <laughs> do you? Too late. You clearly have rigor mortis on your face. Oh wait, Mikey, is that an you expression? Doing? You're not Are a you late trying stage to make alcoholic. an expression with You're a face? dog. Why? Please stop. It's horrible. <laughs> You're <laughs> scaring yourself. Oh my god. Ah! You can't stop. Oh, it just popped it's up like on my it's screen. It's not even voluntary anymore. You have worn that grin into your face and now it won't come off. What does it even mean? What this is, is the, the emotion face of you're a trying late to stage. convey? Are you trying to make an expression with that face? Why? You gotta stop. You gotta try to stop. You are correct. Like the rest of you, it comes from a bad place somewhere in the past. That's all you know for now. Yeah, there is. Didn't you notice when you took the tie off the thing? Yeah, and it wasn't worth it at all. Wall. Go In back. <laughs> your face adorned with the expression. You should, you could try it still. Like, what's the worst that can happen? It fails. So... You should try it. Like, what's the worst that can happen? Go ahead. The window stands broken in its frame. Cold wind blows in. The shards face outward. Whatever broke this window came I'll from I'll be right back. Inside. I'm going to make popcorn. A fine web of scarring covers the back of your right hand, but none of it is recent. More likely a projectile than a held object. There are no fragments on the floor from pulling a tool back in after impact. It is too large for a bullet, yet too small for a piece of furniture. You're looking for something heavy and larger than your fist. The single green shoe you found fits the hole almost as well as your foot. It would have also been heavy enough if thrown with force. Congratulations. You smashed the window with your own shoe. Now you only have one. If you're lucky, you could still find the other one on the balcony outside. The door to it should be outside your room. The cool wind gushes in. Your toes curl up from the cold. stands broken in its f the morning light hurts your eyes hello officer the young woman raises a cigarette to her lips her eyes are brown and her face is speckled with birthmarks she can't be more than 28 uh no. Because you're a police officer, sir. I am, yes. Unless you've been feeding us a set of very well-rehearsed lies all this time. You've been here for three days. On official police business, no less. Couldn't say. In truth, so far, mostly drinking.
Of course. Be careful, officer. They don't like the police around here. Something stirs in you as she's about to go. Call it an instinct, a need. The need to ask questions. It's like you said the words a million times before. She looks back at you, a light glinting off her eyes. Yes. The dock workers are pretty cocky. They think they're police enough. At least here on the coast. I can't say about the rest of the city. There was the usual ruckus. Loud disco music. I couldn't say. It's impossible to hear people speaking from over here. Oh yes, various artists. Ostentatious orchestration prime among them. Oh, that. Yeah. Whoa. The less said about OO, the better. OO were huge where I come from. I was very young then, of course. Like, seven. Life gets hard, but we go on. It would appear so. At around two o'clock, the disco stopped and there was a change of pace. A slow, sad song started playing, like organ music on repeat. That went on for quite a while. Some of the time, you were yelling along to it. Yes, there was a church in there, a really small church. Like the smallest, saddest church in the whole world. It was about that. And also, that it doesn't matter anymore and that we're alone now. It was difficult to tell. The song itself was very quiet and soft, but you sounded like a winded boar, sir. It was hard to understand what you were singing on top of it. Don't be. I was going out later anyway. It didn't bother me. Then you started screaming and trashed the place. Yes, never. A window was smashed, the tape player probably, the song stopped, and furniture too. A real destructathon. There was screaming, then I think uh, you passed out. There was. I think you screamed that you didn't want to be this type of animal anymore. I may have misheard, but it was sort of memorable. I went out afterwards. Everything was quiet by then, around four or five. And that was it. It's 51. Okay, I'm back. Yeah. You're in a hostel, sir. And I... We are in Revachol. Revachol is the disgraced former capital of the world, divided into zones of control under foreign occupation. Half a century after a failed world revolution, she is central to our moment in time. You sure look like you're from Revachol. Ravishal parties. Her accent suggests she is not from around here. She's from Aranye, another part of the world. Glad to have been of assistance. No. You need to accept that you're a weirdo with one shoe. <laughs> no, you must accept that you live a life without it.
there they both are. Two identical shoes, both copiously green and indiscriminately snakeskin, reunited on your feet, like two baby crocodiles. It's pretty clear a normal cop is not what you are. Good, they're balanced, comfy. Feels like the only good thing about you right now, truth be told. Thanks, Composure. <laughs> you should pick that fat, juicy cigarette butt from the tray. Light it up and smoke the living shit out of it. You should totally sing karaoke here, the first chance you get. Your emotions need to be expressed. People need to know your vast oceanic soul. Exactly. It's measured, level-headed, and it needs to be heard. Through a PA system. By other people. You should sing the sad small church song from that tape you found. Thought it was obvious. No, no. Don't sing the happy song. It's stupid. Sing the sad song. It's profound. You would need another copy of the tape first, though. Yeah. The one upstairs is destroyed. I wish my life had a narrator. A man in his late twenties stands behind the counter, inspecting a stuffed seabird. As you approach, he gives you a sideways glance. That is honestly really again. impressive, I didn't know that. That was disdain in his eyes. Even now he's purposely ignoring you. A competent work of taxidermy. The white and brown seabird lies among piles of coasters and drying mugs. One of its wings broken. The man is trying to mend it. Looks like the bird was ripped off the shield that was used to mount it. Most likely on a wall. This is the great skewer. The seabird is the symbol for the discovery of the Insulindian Isola, the part of the world you are in right in now. Salindia. Look, your buddy is over there. Why don't you go and talk to him, okay? He pretends not to hear you, concentrating on the bird instead. Oh no, you're a hero. A real hero cop. Could the massive property damage upstairs have anything to do with this? Am I? Or did you ride in, take the body down, solve the murder, and not trash my hostel room?
No, you see, actually, you didn't. You haven't done anything even remotely useful since you got here. No, I haven't seen you around. I'm not always here. Colleague waiting. A bespeckled man in an orange bomber jacket is tapping his foot on the floor. Looks like he's waiting for someone. You. <laughs> As you approach, he narrows his eyes and extends his hand in greeting. Hello. I'm Kim Kitsuragi. What if it's the hand Lieutenant, of someone you don't like? Prison 57. You must be from the 41st. You realize he is waiting for your name. Concentration makes you squint your eyes. Your name should be deep gold and orange, like a forest fire looming on the horizon but mixed with the stench of liquor rising from your breath. You're two steps closer to it, but there are still many to go. Okay, then. It looks like mm -hmm. we had a little skidding error on Sunday. Saturday, too, actually. Have you had time to talk to the manager here? What he means is, You're not being able to he think has of a name been trying to meet up with you for two days. But you have been otherwise occupied. <laughs> yeah. If you don't mind, we should talk to him again. Ask him for a rundown of the area. Now that I'm here as well. I understand the scene is out back, right? It also wouldn't hurt to assure him the police are finally here. In full force, I mean. Have you mapped out the initial interviews? Okay, we'll have time for that after we take a look at the coroner's case. Have you removed the dead body from the tree? <laughs> Look, man, you know, so, yeah. The body is still in the tree. This is the first time you detect a weariness in the lieutenant's voice. It is obvious he would have preferred for the body to no longer be in the tree. Where it has been hanging for seven days straight. We should go there as soon as we are done talking to the owner. I can see you drank last night and the night before, and that you are still drunk now. But I have seen officers go through worse, much worse. If you need something for your headache, there is a general store nearby. But as I said, the dead body should be our number one concern. After you, officer. If you're about to embark on an investigation, shouldn't you have a badge? You mean you don't have a badge? Losing your identification card is a serious matter. My vehicle has a shortwave. You can use it to report your badge missing. I advise you to try to locate it as quickly as possible. But Lieutenant Kitsuragi is now in your party. You can talk to him whenever by interacting with him. Hello, sweetie. Wait, who's sweetie? Why, you are, officer. You're a handsome man, officer, with your mustache and your chiseled jaw and that silly dimple on your chin. 
You must forgive me. I'm getting so scatterbrained. I completely forgot to introduce myself. I'm Lena. My husband Morel and I are staying with our friend Gary just down the street, but I come here for tea when they're away. This Lena is wacky enough for the Motley Crew. Hire her on the spot. Yes, officer. You look rather dazed. Like a stunned fox. But surely things can't be that bad. Oh my. You know where we are, right? That's right. And where is the Whirling in Rags cafeteria itself located? Yes, indeed. We are in the fine city of Revishol. How would I even begin to tell you? Revishol is the most beautiful city in the world. We're fortunate to be here, you and I. I haven't seen very many other cities personally, but everyone says so. Revishol is a rare jewel. This city used to rule the world, though it has seen better days. Speaking of history, you know what year it is, yes? That's right, dear. How splendid. Here, take this pen. Knowledge should always be rewarded. Her relief is palpable. <laughs> she was getting pretty worried about you then, but now she relaxes her shoulders. <laughs> I can tell that this is taxing for you, so I'll just ask one more question. What regime are we living under? What mode of government? Nope, sadly not. Revishol is what's called a zone of control, under an alliance of foreign powers called the Coalition. We have no government of our own, and what democracy we have is market-driven. Meaning, buying is voting. Oh dear. I am cat cops. And you were doing so well. There aren't any cops in Rivershall, not in the traditional sense. The status of law enforcement has been a complicated matter since the revolution. But we should stop for today, sweetie. You look like you need a break. Besides, I'm not the best person to explain the big things to anyone. She's scared now. She's realized you really are brain damaged. A defeat, I'm afraid. The people of this archipelago tried to build something new, something different. The rest of the world didn't like it, so they came and ended it. This was 42 years ago. It has something to do with everything. I really don't know how to explain it better. You were doing quite well up until the end, dear. It does look like you're having trouble remembering things. History and places. Remembering reality in a word. It's very odd. A sigh. The lieutenant buries his nose in his notebook. But maybe a fresh set of eyes is what the world needs. And while I'm no doctor, 
such bouts of amnesia are often temporary, so I, I wouldn't worry too much. Someone more educated in sweeping matters. Maybe you should ask? No. I'm not an encyclopedia. I won't be a guide either. I'm a detective. Of course. Then I don't know. Someone rich, maybe? Wealthy people are educated. Though I don't know where you would find a wealthy person in Martinez. Of course, dear. Good luck with your case. How'd you like to roll with <laughs> I said, how would you like to roll with Mega? The man with the unimpressive beard notices you approaching. He drops the ledger he I was holding my and turns to the lieutenant. <laughs> Mr. Garth, right? You run this place. Yeah. Yes. I am Kim Kitsuragi from Prison 57. This is an inter-district investigation. So joining me from Prison 41... Fantastic. Right. Now, I know it took us a while to arrive at the scene. It also took you a while to call us and report the dead body. It was you who placed the call, yes? No, I only just got here. It was probably Sylvie who called you. She usually works the bar here. I'm only temporarily taking over her duties. Do you have her number? As a matter of fact, I do. You said you just got here. From where? Are you a local? What, of Martinez? No, I live in Jamrock. I only sometimes come here to keep an eye on the place. This is just one of the many, many cafeterias I manage. But you still know your way around, yes? Yes, I know where some things are. But as I said, I don't live here. I just used to work here. And I'm not going to start working here again, if that's what you think. I didn't imply that. Detective. He probably means this is where you step in and ask your questions. His face expresses profound doubt in your having this. She went away because none of your business. Have they not been telling you you're a cop? Okay, you got me. She went away because of the dead body out back. And because I asked for her number. That's why Sylvie went away. I hope you appreciate that. Thank you. I asked an employee out. She didn't want to come, but felt obliged to. It was a bad idea. Now, what is so goddamn fascinating about that for you? It's got nothing to do with the lynching. <laughs> Good for you. Uh, was there something else? I'd like to get back. To Behind this building, there's a courtyard. They hoisted him up on a tree there. That's easy. See that door there? First you exit through that. Then, to your right, you should see a big hole in the fence. A really big one. You can get to the courtyard through there. No need for the keys. The hole is big enough for the Franco-Nigerian cavalry to fit through. Let's go. Not so fast. You owe me 130 real. Oh, excuse me. You owe me 130 real. The IIR, or... Inter-Isoleri Real is the global reserve currency, 
Whatever part of the world you're in right now, it's safe to assume he means you owe him some money. Wow, you're a genius. Yes, that's right, money. You oh, I owe this establishment you mean I owe you 130 real. Let's see. Three nights at a tariff of 20 real comes to 60 real. Then there's the window you annihilated. The hole in the window was the first thing I saw when I came to work. So don't try to tell me you didn't. That will be 40 real in damages. Another thing you've annihilated is half the bar. You've run a tab of 30 real. Actually, more, but we'll round it down to 30 for your hard work maintaining the stability and order of Revachol. That's 60 plus 40 plus 30 equals 130 real. And yes, real is still money. What are you, a philosopher? Money is what grown-up people use to pay for things. Things like this hostel room, or, or eight bottles of potent blend, and nine packs of royal extra. We use it for everything, really. <laughs> Is this currency? <laughs> <laughs> Are you serious? From your work? I don't know. You can take bribes, I guess. I'm sorry. I don't think cops can take bribes. Some do take recompense, but only to survive. <sighs> For survival, to pay me. Unless you want to become a hobo. Do you want to become a hobo? There's nowhere else to stay in Martinez, and it's a cold spring outside. Money doesn't make you happy, but it lets you be unhappy for a while longer. If you run out of money, yeah. you die. It's like that for all of us. Me too. That's why I need you to pay me. I'm not an asshole. Yes, it is. No, you see, that's 40 cents. Cents are a form of currency 100 times smaller than the real. I'm not even going to take this. Come back when you have 130 real. He stands silently, looking at the coppers on the counter. Isn't it evil? The order of magnitude between what is asked of a person and what they have? There's a shuffle of nylon as Lieutenant Kitsuragi looks for something in the pockets of his orange bomber. I'm sorry, but he has to pay. I can't let him stay here any longer if he doesn't. If he doesn't have the money by tonight, then... Officer, maybe you are better off working this from home for now. <laughs> you live in Jamrock, right? It's not that far away. Officer, you really need to take this up with your station. I have a shortwave radio in my car. Call them. Ask for assistance. We have to get this investigation started now. Good luck. By the way, where is home? The address is coming up blank, and this place sure isn't it. But you've been at this hostel cafeteria for only three nights. Where were you before? You had to be somewhere. Why did you say that? <laughs> the 
The old thesaurus comes up empty. Maybe you should ask the lieutenant. No. But isn't that an expression, not a place? A saying, up on Marvel Hill, a great high place, one that is impossible to climb back to. That doesn't sound like somewhere you can stay if you run out of money. You can try. Run some addresses in your head when you get the time. Maybe a street or an apartment will appear. Or you store your thoughts. So. Kim also tries not to look at the pile of tape viscera on the carpet, or the weird suitcase on the hat rack, or the potted plant dying in the corner. But it's all just too morbid to ignore. He takes a step toward the door, like he'd like to leave. The bed is cold and not particularly inviting. The option to go to sleep becomes available every night after 9 p.m. you have your squad to move. I mean, if you're a cop, but... Yeah, but you could put four people in it. You could put four people in it, so, you know, it would be a squad car. That sugary black rum stain on the counter makes you teary-eyed with joy. It's almost touching how syrupy and sticky it is. How long have you been up already? An hour would have been bad. Two hours is mystical. You have truly wiped out all trace of yourself if you haven't thought about rum and lemonade yet. Maybe later. What is this? You're on Casual the job. Friday. You can't drink on the job. What's with the lackadaisical laxman attitude? You used to be passionate about getting your drink on. Show me you're still young. Show me you have the fire in you. Lick that stain off the counter right now. What happened, man? You used to be cool. Go get your boring normal person drink then. It would go well with those cigarettes. That's a great combination. <laughs> On the counter, rolled out of his open hand, you see a blister pack of headache medicine.
There is only one way to wake this bone idol from his slumber. Roar like a hurricane. Rip the buildings from the earth. Find a yelling man. Looks like a sow descendant. A lot of sow dock workers around. Wait, what? No, he was just sleeping. What do you want, officer? Yeah, what about it? You know, people die here every day. Someone's found in a ditch, another one falls in a mano, a third one gets eaten by stray dogs. If someone has decided to die on top of a tree, then how is it my concern? I can tell you this. Trouble's ahead. You heard what I said. Draw your own conclusion. That's all I know. The lieutenant gives you a little nod. Then makes a note in his blue notebook. So Union people think he was a killer, he thinks. Even sleepy hair. This doesn't help a lot, but it's something. Good work, detective. Indeed. Help yourself to some. Wait. No. Oh, it's empty. Sorry about that. Oh. That's the name of my employer. I work in logistics. He doesn't sound too enthusiastic about this. How's it going? <sighs> Haven't you noticed what's going on outside? Why are you yawning just because of Chinese currency? You on? Huh? Huh? You on? We're in the middle of That's a strike down at the arbor. Trying to force some sense into Sounds the executive like board of Wild Pine. <laughs> For one, I get use some more shut eye in the mornings. Right to work, right to sleep, I say. They got it. Majored's got it. He's guarding the gate. I just getting some sleep. Or was. We are the workers, the union. We know what we need, what's right for us. Okay, I guess there's also Everard. He's in charge of the union. He's smart, knows how to negotiate. He's got our back. The dock worker doesn't answer. His head is already back down on the table in sweet sleep. RCM in Martinez. What can I help you with? We don't see a lot of police around here, that's all. Of course. What can I help you with? Me? I am just a gardener.
I am pleased to meet you too, officer. Of course. Where to? There's the pier, the Capeside apartment buildings, some more tenements. Not a lot, really. The harbor gates. Some kind of commotion, I think. I don't follow the local politics. A fleet store, too. Some shops and a bridge. The canal bridge leads to the coast, but it's broken, I think. Some kind of accident, probably. Just coast. There's a little fishing village there and a fish market, but that got closed down ages ago. It's just water. No, actually, I think they call it the Martinez Inlet. There are some islands in the bay, but they're hard to reach. No problem. Of course, I won't hold you back. Before you stands a motor carriage. The bodywork is covered in blue and white livery, bearing the number 57. Vapor emanates from the large engine on the back of the vehicle. It, this must be the infernal machine that tore you from oblivion. The Caprice Kinema motor carriage. In the cabin, you are welcomed by a set of steering levers, a radio microphone on a hook, a pull-out toolbox under the seat, and the soft glow of the fuel preheater gauge. A metallic drawer slides out from under the seat and clicks into place. The tools inside are neatly organized. Take what you need, officer. It's going to be a long case. I'm not protective of my tools, like some men are. He's clearly a little protective of his tools. But what can you do? Work is work. It's robust, weatherproof, and well-made. Police issue, blue, lets you see things in the dark you would otherwise miss. The pry bar feels nice and cold in your hand, heavier than you'd think, useful for opening all sorts of doors and lids. The handles are long and sleek. Snap, snap, go the cutters. In your hand, the pull-out toolbox slides back into its nest. Preheater gauge casts a warm glow on the steering levers and the radio on its hook. The frequency tableau lights up and the green button labeled Prime Line glows like a feline eye. The soft purr of electrical kittens, radio waves cast far and wide over the metropolis. A woman's voice greets you. This is Precinct 57. Hello, Lieutenant. How may I assist you? Hello, Alice. Please assist our colleague from the 41st Precinct here. I'm putting him on. Operating the radio is easy. Just be confident. You've probably done it a thousand times. This is Officer Alice Demetri, Precinct 57. How may I assist you? Just a second, Officer. 10 to 10 five. This is 41st, uh, come in, over. The man uses relay code. You got this. You're a cop, and cops know relay code. 10 four message received. 10 five, relay message. What's your status, over? 10 18, state your message, sir. <laughs> Ten nine, over. Ten four, message received. This is a very serious situation. I need to ten twenty to the captain, over. Is it him? What does he want? Says he lost his badge and needs to report it. He what? He lost his badge? Who lost his badge? Yeah, no. Dick fucking Mullen. Who do you think? It's Officer Dick Mullen from the bestseller Dick Mullen and the Lost Identity. Dick Mullen is not your name. It's the name of a fictional detective who would not lose his badge. Defend yourself. Immediately. They're laughing at you. Ten 
then for I hear you, officer. I'm just going to make a note here that you are in pursuit of your misplaced badge. Over. Fuck me! Mac, come here! You've got to hear this! Dick Mullen lost his badge! What's going on? Super Cop here lost his badge. He lost his what now? His badge. He lost his goddamn fucking badge. 10-9, come again. I didn't get that. Over. New heights even for Captain Sober. Ask him. <laughs> Ask him if he's lost his gun, too. <laughs> Sergeant Person wants to know if you lost your gun, too. Over. Check your pockets. Check your... Holy fuck. You don't know where it is, do you? Okay, it's gone. Your gun is most definitely gone. Ten nine, come in, officer. Did you get my question? We were wondering about your gun. Over. Even before you can get the words out, everything gets scrambled in your brain. I simply misplaced. He says he didn't Again, lose his gun. Or his son, whatever that means. Ask him to describe it. His gun. Not his fun. Just the gun will do. <laughs> Satellite officer McLean requests a description of your weapon. Over. It's a single shot kill A9. An armistice to be precise. Says it's a kill uh, 9mm armistice. Armistice? What? Is he a fucking. Clearly he doesn't have his villier anymore. Dear God, he lost his gun. Oh, oh my, I can't. <laughs> mm -hmm. This you is a trivial laughing matter. Mac can face a giant of Coco Nur by himself, but this go here made him piss his pants. <laughs> oh, I, I can't. Fuck. He lost his ass because he still got his wiener. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I'm not going to. Ask him. Oh. Sergeant Thorson here is wondering if you are still in possession <laughs> of your genitalia. Over. <clears throat> That's a negative. <laughs> Not going to say that. Over. What's he saying? Share with the class. He, uh, he said he sodomized your mother. The prick ate Mama's vanilla waffles at the captain's birthday party. Some nerve he's got. <clears throat> sure her vanilla waffles were the only thing he ate? Shut up, Chester. This isn't funny. This is my mom we're talking about. Tell him to apologize right now. <coughs> Sergeant Person requests that you apologize for the claims that you made about his mother. Over. <laughs> he says he's sorry and didn't mean nothing by it. Okay. Tell him. Tell him to find his goddamn badge and gun. That's the only thing that matters here. Satellite officer. V 10-4, affirmative. Officer is in pursuit of his firearm. Oh god, I... Officer, do you need further assistance? Over. Uh, okay, 10-4, sir. I hear you. Relay your question. Over. Wait. Before you say anything stupid, think it through. Be smart about this. Ask if he's there alone. Then for sir, I'm not hearing your question. That's a negative, sir. I got a 10-12. Visitors present here. Over. He wants to verify his information. But of course, it says Dick Mullen, High General of the Revachoian Cavalry Force. Tell him to stop wasting time. What do you need, sir? Over.
Understood, sir. Over. Send for, I hear you. I don't have the authority to grant your request, but... What does he want now? He's asking for money. Is he fucking kidding? I don't think he is. Don't give that asshole anything. He's just gonna drink it all. All right. Uh, that's a negative on the additional funds, sir. Over. Anything else, sir? Over. Roger that. Ten ten. Over and out. As you tap on the gauge, the indicator pin jerks as if startled. It's There's no use pressing the heat button. It won't start without the ignition key. Translation. We're not going anywhere, right? Alternative translation. Don't even think you can drive my MC. The white suede feels luxurious under the touch, and the metal clutch handle so very familiar in your palm. Yeah. Okay, it's a good thing it doesn't tell you to burn things with that voice, you might actually do it. The worn and beaten wooden planks of the bench. Like, he seems like he's on top comforted. of things, he must have a good mm. reason. We can sit on benches after we've solved the murder. You can revisit the bench, if you ever need to pass the time when Lieutenant Kitsuragi is gone. This Postla Vantorie mail collection box has been heavily vandalized with graffito. A closer inspection. Sir, step right in. The store is open. Are you interested in a new and exciting book? Okay, sir. I'll try to answer any questions you have. I hope they're about books. My name is Annette, sir. My mum, her name is Plaisance. She owns the store. She's inside minding the register or organising the stock. Feel free to step in and browse our wares. I'm signalling that the store is open. Otherwise, people might not know. They'd miss out on the crime, romance, and biographies of famous people. Oh, no, no, sir. I'm happy to help Mum by luring in customers. Besides, I have some hot juice in my vacuum bottle to keep warm. I do my studies at home at the moment. I have to help Mum keep this place running. Mum says it's necessary to do both, because it builds character. Mum says a proper worker is dutiful. That's how you get ahead in life. You succeed. There is stress and unease behind these words. She's reciting etiquette. Mum says it's peachy. She was a little afraid at first. There's talk about this house being cursed. Cursed in the way that makes them say that no business has ever really thrived here, sir. That they all go... Exactly, but we've been doing fine so far. We can go into the bookstore and ask about the case, but I don't see much more to look into here. Yes, please do also look at our wares inside. The postcards and board games are there, sir. It does not manifest itself in any way. It does not exist. I liked it better when we were talking about whether it's appropriate to stand out in the freezing weather. Anything else you wanted to talk about, sir? Nothing really, sir. Mum doesn't allow me to sneak around in the back rooms or the cellar. I don't really know what's there. Maybe I can tell you about some of our books instead. Oh, kings and queens and generals of old, or artists and writers, or musicians, those kinds of people. I think that's why people read them, to find the secrets of their fame. Seems like most people who read those books fail to get more famous from reading them. Mm -hmm.
old call box with a matrix of push buttons lists all the companies in the East Delta Commerce Center. This button looks new, but someone has removed the name card. No huh, this button looks new. It's probably not connected yet. Also, you need to go to bed soon. A small mountain of colorful board game boxes. Yeah, I thought you would like There are that. numerous types of games for all ages. Like two years to actually... A lot of <laughs> shelf space seems to be taken up by we're our related merchandise. Oh, I, it was, it was all part of my it was all part of my plan, Albeck. An endless variety of source books, lore books and codices litter the table. The topmost book is titled Welkin Compendium. There's also books in a board game section. Who wants to read books? There's a box that says we're our third edition mega setting supplements module. The side panel notes a fantastic adventure board game, new maps and miniatures. A sticker on it displays 25 real. That price is steep, but then it's the third edition mega setting supplement, so it makes sense. Nonsense for anemic beano clouds. <laughs> Wonderful board games, sir. The Viticulturist is a classic for sure, or perhaps you'd like <laughs> Archipelagos of Insulinda. A very educational game for those interested in geography, Graubritter is a fun game of economic competition, but can get quite intense after a while. We have games for the whole family. You can play with your children. Friends are technically like family. For playing with friends, I'd recommend Suzerainity. It's a civilization building game where you build a civilization, then set off to brutally colonize and repress other civilizations. It'll cost 12 real. What? Lousy auras there. No, role-playing games are popular among those types. You know, who are into those kind of things. Personally, I don't like it. Not at all. I've heard they turn people into occult enthusiasts. That they have rituals where they try to summon entities. Highly immoral stuff. You can still buy them, though. Welcome to Crime, Romance, and Biographies of Famous People. My name is Plaisance. Be welcome, and please take responsibility for the energy you bring into this space. <laughs> I am the proudest owner of our little shop of culture. Annette, yes, my daughter. I hope she wasn't slacking off again with her nose in science fiction. Tell me. Was she at her post, doing her job like a proper girl? Wonderful! Did you talk to her? Great! 
On a scale of one to ten, how compelled were you to buy books after talking with her? Come now, it's not personal. It's about proper sales practices and market research. I expect an answer. My precious, her dedication brings joy to my heart. If you have children, I hope they turn out as great as my Annette. Mind your own business, sir. In our society, people don't get to tell each other how to raise their children. It's none of your or anyone's business. Denial is the way she copes with criticism. The woman before you scans the store, her shoulders rigid and tense. Every now and then, she nudges her glasses. Cursed? Who said that? Annette? We'll have a word with her. This place is not cursed. It has a robustly magnetic energy. Good for commercial activity. My business is thriving, sir. What in God's name is she talking about? <laughs> These shelves are overburdened with books from the same series. You see the name Dick Mullen over and crime fiction is a disgrace. An asinine misrepresentation of the physical attributes of the arduous everyday work of actual police officers. These books greatly overstate the excitement of police work, glossing over how long it takes to actually follow up on leads and eliminate dead ends. What's more, they completely ignore the psychological hardships of year after year coming into contact with people during the worst days of their lives. Not a single mention of all the stress this work creates upon the officer's family. Detective fiction just doesn't tell the truth at all. Now, would you like a list of all the books found on the shelf? You see, Dick Mullen on the job. Get me Mullen. The stalwart adventures of a killing is declared. Dick Mullen in the murder house. The final case of Dick Mullen. An obvious lie. Dick Mullen in the clock tower. The shelves fill to the brim with crime novels. Yeah. You see a set of tattered curtains blocking the no, way. No, I wasn't to expecting room. the voiceover Excuse to be this officer. thorough at all. The back room is strictly for employees only. Just as you're about to pull apart the curtains, the petrified voice of the shop owner cries out once more. Sir, don't touch that. I told you it's off limits for the customers. Psychologically speaking, we're done if you decide to open them. I won't be held responsible for the consequences. She looks away, mumbling. Why is everyone always messing with the curtains? Why can't they just buy books like normal people? No, it's just a storeroom for the employees, I told you. Now please step away from the curtains. Why? It's not like anyone was killed there. I'm sorry, I don't mean to be so impolite. Just please don't go there. No! Please just talk to me, officer. Come here and let's talk this through before you decide- Talking is always good. Go see what she has to say. You see a tattered set of curtains and a polyhedron shaped. Hello again, esteemed officer, and welcome to crime, romance, and biographies of famous people. I already told you, the it's just a storage is. room for employees. I don't understand why it's so important to you. Just let it go, officer. 
go and buy some goddamn books. You're supposed to be drawn to the books. No! Okay, fine. It's because this place is cursed. Just like Annette said, they don't call it the doomed commercial area for nothing. Are you happy now, officer? Happy that you've ruined everything? Yes, I've contacted numerous parapsychologists and even a pair of Simonese mediators. They provided me with the wards. The wards help to keep the doom at bay and protect us against the darkness that lies further in the building. Even though now I fear, it's not enough. Oh, this! No, it's a special Hymian amulet, blessed by desert pygmy shamans with a spell of compulsion. It's to compel people to buy books. There are numerous spells cast throughout the store. I had the books anointed with a different inducement spell, for example. It's guaranteed to boost sales 15%. Desert Pygmy Shamans. That sounds like a rather questionable way to describe a group of people. The curse is so much worse than you could imagine. It's a disease eating at the very foundation. It's the curse of financial distress, of ruin and bankruptcy. It's not just that, officer. We're dealing with something supernatural here. It's the cacodemons feeding off bad business practices and disappointing income statements. There's something wrong with this building, I can tell you. Ever since I arrived, I've sensed an eerie lingering presence as if I was unwanted here. Most certainly not. I don't want anyone who's not familiar with the psychic arts to get involved in this mess. My liege, you know what this case calls for? A para-detective. Mm -hmm. Time to fire up the old lie machine. No. The lieutenant looks at you. You've got this. Just go with it. This is elegant. Stop being such a fussy prude. You can't convince her without lies. The woman before you scans the store, her shoulders rigid and tense. Every now and then, she nudges her glasses. You see a tattered set of curtains. You see a dimly lit room full of dusty furniture and trash. I warned you, you're unleashing forces beyond. A heavy door with a missing handle stands before you, covered in dozens, if not hundreds, of little oddly shaped trinkets. What if you just break it down? Only an echo. No one is there. That's right. Take in your surroundings. You need to have a solid ground and a proper posture if you want to succeed. The room is dimly lit and littered with old barbershop rubbish, but the path to the door is clear. It's made yeah, of a that, solid that, that's block how of wood, sometimes, but it has stood there for ages. The hinges are old and coated with a carmine layer. Sometimes you just layer wake up and you're like, bookstore ghost. I won't when apologize. I said we're parapsychologically done. You clearly don't care about the consequences. What gives you the right? Don't expect my help from now on. The back door is locked and I threw away the key. I won't trifle with such forces. Do look at the books, though. The books compel you. You may be able to make up for this by buying a lot of books. I hope you're a voracious reader.
we live in the in the, we live in an ANCAP paradise, so unfortunately, no labor laws. You see a set of tire tracks in the brown slush that covers the plaza mosaic. No, these tracks are not interesting at all. Let the street sweeper just sweep them away. Well, sixty percent is only a little over half the time now. Hard to say. Your vision is blurred, and you're having mm -hmm. difficulty concentrating thanks to your relentless hangover. Cop habit. You look at everything. This isn't case related, you think. There are several footprints in the mud, left by work boots. Anywhere from 6 to 12 pairs have walked here. Heavy workers' boots with reinforced toes and hop. Isn't this something an industrial worker would wear? Not it. What do you think you are? A super detective? You're hungover. These are just dents in the mud. No pattern emerges for the time being. such a thing as an ugly kid then this is it he's almost exquisite in his ugliness like a gremlin eyes are like two black holes and his jaw is twitching as if trying to break free from the empire of his body. The kid is obviously high. Fuck that! Kuno, yeah! Right in the mouth hole! Shits himself? The rake, Kuno! You should throw the rake at him, Kuno! The fuck? Does Kuno know what a rake is? Kuno is not a gardener. All right, entertain the Kuno. Show me what you got. What you got there? What you got, huh? Show me what you got. Right, pig. This is where Kuno plays with his little wooden choo-choo. What do you want with it? Yeah, whatever. Kuno doesn't give a shit. Kuno's Kuno, pig? It's always Kuno, never I. Clearly, the kid's using the third-person perspective Wake as up. a shield. Kuno? Kuno doesn't do that smart shit. Don't throw that book shit at Kuno. Kuno knows you're lying. Trying to get Kuno hooked on the book. Watch out, Kuno! He's trying to fiddle you! He's gonna put his hands on you! He's got the Kuno help! Everybody, please! He's digging his dick out! Escalate, Kuno! His dick is out! You're afraid! Pigs in there in Kuno! Somebody, please! How did we get here? How did this happen? This makes no sense. There may still be a way out. Just appeal to his reason. No one? Kuno's doing this because he likes it, pig. This is where Kuno establishes dominance. Change of plan. You can't let that happen. It will make things harder down the line. You may end up missing crucial information. Help! The pig's gagging him! Kuno can't speak! You put him up to this yourself. When you Listen to your friend. <sighs> They are 
last he ever tried to fuck Kuro in the ass. What, 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 he's a child. You shouldn't punch children. Oh, he's really annoying. Dude, look, if I punch people for being annoying, no one would live in Delaware. Help! Misters, help! He's flashing Kuno? He's showing his genitals? No! <laughs> Get off Kuno, you sick fat fuck! The nearly psychopathic way they can slip in and out of the act implies you're not the first victim. Fucking logical! Help! Lock f For emphasis, a ghost is saying this. A shit-eating psychopathic ghost with an ace up his sleeve. I know you wanted to hit me. You got that I'm gonna fuck that Kuno up look that Kuno's dad gets. The murder look. The rage look. Relax. He can't read your mind. He doesn't know you were thinking that. There's a dead body, remember? That's what you were doing here. You're a cop on a case. I can. Kuna can smell that violent shit. I know what you were thinking. I'm gonna fuck that Kuna up. I'm gonna shut his shit down. You know what? You should have hit the Kuno, because now you're nothing. Get a joke to Kuno. Kuno laughs at you. King Kuno! Kuno turned you into his prison, bitch. You're gonna be in this shit with Kuno. No, you're not. We can just leave. Bitch, you're gonna be in this shit with Kuno forever. A peepo is a type of hat, by the way. Talk to me about my fucking people. You don't know where I come from. You just Kuno's bottom bitch. Okay, Kuno is kind to his bitch. Ask your questions, but remember, this changes shit. Click, 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 click. <sighs> shit, load pig. What's your question? Why Don't do you hate this child? Shit, They're just a dick. If I were to want to waste my time, which I do not, I would ask them who he is, how he got there. The usual being, have you seen anything out of the ordinary? Or have you seen anything suspicious? Kuno's fucking. Kuno uses the fucking for target practice. He's trying to hide the fact that he doesn't know. Kuno knows all kinds of shit. Kuno's not a snitch, that's all. Trying to make the Kuno sing into the popo phone. Probably climbed. Kuno was busy down the road when that shit. You heard Kuno? Kuno wasn't even in Martinez. Kuno wasn't in Revachol. Kuno wasn't regional. I don't know. Some fucking mesk or, or. I don't know. Some other place. Night City. Kuno was in fucking Night City. There is no Night City anywhere. That sounds like the name of a city in some pulp science fiction novel. Why you gotta be riding Kuno's ass? You haven't been where Kuno's been. You haven't been in Kuno's head. You wanna know where Kuno was? You wanna know what Kuno's been fucking up to? I don't tell him that, Kuno. It's, it's not fucking lame. Kuno's building Kuno City. Night City. Rage City. The City of Rage. That's it. And it's not lame. Lame! That's the name of Kuno City, bitch! Get the fuck off Kuno's back! This shit ain't about that! It's impossible to deduce what it is about, at least for the moment. If it's important, it'll come up later. Focus on the case. Just a couple of pigs sniffing around in the dirt. Yeah, you tell the faggoty Kuno! Looks like you're a faggoty now, whatever that means. The suspicious question doesn't really work in antagonistic situations. Then after situations. you're done beating this child, you need to go to battle. Get lost, f Kuno doesn't fucking. The corpse looks at you with bulging white eyes. The face around them does not look human. It's swollen and ready to burst. His lips are fish-like 
and his tongue like a ball gag in his mouth. You seem to be holding your breath. A cargo belt twists his neck at an unnatural angle. The body below appears stiff. It's letting out an ungodly rot. The smells... Active decay. He took it to throw up of his own. No one is judging. He's about to blow! Cock's gonna blow, Kuno! There he still is, looking right through you. This trash container is locked. The sliding lid as a... The body is downwind from here. Maybe you prefer the smell of garbage to the smell of death. We could try using a pry bar. The one you took from my motor carriage, or... Or we could ask for a key from the manager of the whirling in rags. He might also have information. This is better than the pry bar idea. Inconspicuous pile of the roofing material eaten. It's nothing. Someone just left some roofing material slanted against an old shack. Glad you asked. When junior researcher Olari Tal invented etonite in the Wartner Polytechnic Institute some 30 odd years ago, he thought it would last forever. Hence the name, etonite. Sadly, the only lasting thing, because it's nice and orderly, well laid pallets. Easy on the eyes. Rhythmic pattern calms your mind. Mammals like this stuff. Okay. It's a really good game. Why do you hate children? Why do you want to beat that child? That's not a reason to beat children! I had to have this conversation with Wormry as well. The child being annoying is not a justification to beat them. Yes. You all just want to beat children because you're cucked. The theme on that pinball machine Ch uh, is a standard wiener, wiener, child beater. used on everything. From pinball cabinets to full of flavor cigarettes, clinging to a picture book version of the past century, waiting for the king to come back and cast out all the profiteers. The contemporary period I stands just care still. About the fated children. carousel of progress that doomed the royalists is itself winding down. Can I help you? Mine? No, it belongs to the whirling in rag. Thank you for clearing that up. Why do you keep the container locked? Why? To keep the hobos and drunks out. That's why. And the neighbors too. They put their trash there and they don't pay for the garbage company. I thought as much. And are you the only party with access to the trash container? Well, yes. Us and the garbage disposal company. It seems a little callous, doesn't it? Something stirs in you. Okay, then. Maybe you're callous yourself. What do you need them for? It concerns the case. Please cooperate. Just bring them back once you're done, please. What thing? Yes, not the whole damn union, thank God. Just the nastiest and loudest faction. They come here in the evenings. Dumb, unruly types. Think they're big shit. But they're good customers. They place big orders and always pay on time. We should find out who this Lord Faction is occupying the booth. Lordness means talkative, and we need info. We don't. We have to wait. They'll show up sooner or later. Men get hungry, even striking men. If not today, 
Then they'll be here tomorrow. There are these things called days. You sleep between them. What? By the way, you should come back to this thing-based questionnaire if you see anything interesting in the whirling later. Why are you bullying your cat? Why is she just calling her tubby? Who are you calling tubby? Uh. Oh yeah. This trash container is with a well-oiled crack. The lock pops open. It should now be possible to sim- Don't. Maybe you shouldn't. Just the feeling. A warning from some part. The smell of rotten food rises to greet you. You see soggy cartons, dirty rags, and organic waste. We're just in time. This hasn't been emptied for over a week. You see milk and egg rest with one broken egg in it. A box falls into pieces in your hands. Batiste Soleil cereal. There are plastic pasta. Among the thread there kitchen towels, something catches your eye. A pair of denim trousers. As the legs of the slime-covered jeans begin to unspool from the garbage, a rank coarse smell fills the air. The victim's clothes? Cadaverino door is faint. If these belong to the deceased, they were removed when he was still in the early stages of decay. Drop them in here, officer. Guitar mark, blue jeans. Pockets, empty, or emptied. He wore them with a belt, too, a white belt. The loops appear stretched, but the belt is missing. That's it. Do you see anything else in there? Something slimy catches your eye. A drab, long-sleeved shirt, olive-colored, appears from the food waste, dripping with pus. This is a military type of a garment. No label or serial number. This is the kind of rib knit shirt that's worn over light armor to conceal it in an urban scenario. The rest of the rags are just kitchen variety waste. A yellow old mug that catches your eye. But other than that... All right, we should go to Gart again and ask if he knows who put the clothes in the trash. It could be as simple as someone from the hostel cleaning the yard. Or that one. I'd advise against confronting that force. The fuck's he on about, kids? You hear that, Kuno? See? Not really. All we know. The lieutenant nods, then looks back into the trash container. It's just organic waste. What's this? A blue piece of plastic sticks out from the apple peels. Something larger. A clipboard. A blue plastic clipboard with moist papers hanging from it. They look badly damaged, but you can still make out forms and notes. Re Officer, is that your paperwork? Yes, it is. Look. This plastic has the RCM street grid on it. You've even got an autopsy form. If you don't mind me asking, how did this get in the trash? Boring. Try dangerous. You should do a thorough inventory of that. Be sure some has not fallen into the hands of the RCM's enemies, organized crime, or worse. Official notes sometimes contain informants' names, even undercover or parity. It would also not hurt to start taking notes on the case. Now, tell me what your eagle eyes see. Some items, such as the ledger you found, are interactable. Go to your inventory. The container sounds a muffled gong. Why not? That's one thing off the list. I think we got it all. I'm too good for the trash mug. Good. I'm glad you acknowledge your self-worth. 
It's the legend found in the trash. A pitiful cabbage of white and yellow papers hanging from plastic board, barely held together by a metal clip. This sad display is made complete by the f Right. What more do you need? A rubber condom stuck to the back. A graffito that says, defeated. I think you catch the drift. An aluminium block runs the width of the board. By the surface is interrupted by a silvery sticker. It's rectangular, sparkling with iridescence. You don't know how you didn't... What? That thing. It's a halogen watermark. We use it for adding information to RCM property. Any capable light with the right wavelength will do. All RCM vehicles have headlights designed to reveal halogen watermarks. Mine too. This means you can read the watermarks if you just turn the lights off. It depends. Aside from an anti-counterfeiting stamp, mine has... Maybe yours will have how many cases you've sold. Okay. While a bunch of sodden papers sag from the clipboard, they're not exactly white. They're yellowed in patches by sunlight and alcohol. And once in a while, there's a red stamp that exclaims, Case files commit to paper. The case files themselves are plenty. You count more than a... Work, strife, poverty, the Jamrock Quarter. These are handwritten logs of investigations dating back to January 51, this year. The exact number is hard to estimate, due to missing pages and an odd naming convention. But there are at least 20, maybe 30 cases. It's the middle of March. You have attempted two cases a week on average. Huh? Two complex cases to undertake is a lot, yes. You really have to push yourself. I would not suggest it lest you start making mistakes. Two? That's a lot. I didn't mean to say you are making mistakes, by the way. That was presumptuous of me. That's okay. We all do, sooner or later. Like a fan of girls, the checkered papers dry in your hand. The handwriting is extremely dense, if mostly illegible. There is, for precisely, one more. Fifteen pages near the end remain untouched by the damage. Once all the tasks are accomplished, the case is complete. The tasks you've completed flow out of the kind green ape pen in a brash freehand similar to the rest of the letters. The wording comes easily. It's almost robotically simple. Inspect the victim's body. Interview the cafeteria manager. It's not exactly poetry, but poetry would be out of place. A satisfying slash sounds across the paper. You're done, it seems to say. Things to be done and things already done. The composition of reality. This is an extremely useful tool for a detective of the citizen's militia. Now all that remains... No, actually. Any ideas? Great. That's great. That's actually what I was thinking too. The Hanged Man. Good, strong name. We have a very good name for the case now. I'm going to start calling it The Hanged Man. It's good to be sorted this out. Yes, it appears you employ a, shall we say, robust yet literary system. Each invest a title, one might say even. One that draws inspiration from sn- Yes, all caps. One is called The Next World Mural. Others appear more light-hearted. The guys on a cap, it's going to take an effort to piece these case files together, but it can be done. Once you're done inspecting them up close. Yes, how very childish of you. In your and my defense, almost everyone in the RCM uses the titular system, in addition to the official alphanumeric. It's a holdover from the early days of the RCM, right after the revolution, when the organization had little idea how to do things. It persists in an unofficial capacity. Officers use these titles to refer to their work. Again, in your defense, I seem to have named one the man with Soul the hole in his head. That Did was a real it? person. His death was real. Still, I named it that to amuse myself. I pray his loved ones never find out. Rail spiked through the head. He died. It was a workplace accident. You don't exactly close them so much as distance yourself from the smelly papers. They're a little further from your nose now. Yes, 
You can piece them together using the alphanumeric code on the margin. It always begins with HDB41, then date of initialization and time of arrival on the scene, followed by the title. For example, HDB41120117 Zero, zero. The next world mural. Why, yes, your precinct number is 41. Every last alphanumeric in the files begins with it. And these are your case files. It's safe to say HDB are your initials. I got nothing here either. Logic really isn't the best faculty to have this conversation with. But it's the one you got. So sorry. It takes about half an hour to piece one together, using the system you've devised. Where do you want to start? This one is relatively easy to reconstruct. Overnight on cause of failure, rent too high. The mural is enormous. Two silhouettes, a man and a woman, are kissing. The text cut into their form read, True love is possible only in the next world. For new people, it is too late for us. Wreak havoc on the middle class. People call it that thing and that fucking thing. It's visible for miles. In two days, the station's complaints desk gets clogged with requests to remove the bummer. The graffito crew is easy to track down. Only the bell lectures have the literage of industrial paint to cover the surface. One of the graffito artists is rumored to be rich. They take responsibility. The case files do not show you finding the author of the... The crew agrees to clean up after themselves. However, your partner, JV, is against the removal. Citing public support for conservation. This leads to a debate. The 9,000 people subjected to the mural's message. All of Lakeside, Central Jamrock and Villa Lobos, plus half of the eminent domain. Partis a staggering 78% of voters choose to keep it. Turns out the opposition were a loud minority, and that love truly is possible in the next world for new people, and it is too late for us. <laughs> in any case, it appears to have been a rare case of civil activity in the quarter, and agreement as well. What do you want to tackle next? Not much has changed in the meanwhile. A bunch of sodden papers still sag. It's made of dark blue plastic, hard in something rattles inside, ever so lightly. Permeables. It's not hidden per se. The compartment, the plastic shimmers like lapis lazuli, but it is not see-through. You cannot see to it with your hands. You four sized pages hang from the clip, screw. In the back, you see thin, translucent copy of paper. Then rip them from the binder and hand them out. According to three, the topmost are misconduct fines. The middle ones are station calls. And the bottommost are Field autopsy forms. You don't have to be an intellectual giant to do police work. A monetary penalization ranging from 20 to 250 real. Severe cases allow for 1,000 real, but they appear pleasantly vague. These are quite sinister in turn. They give a date and time for the person to appear at the specified precinct police station. A dozen pages of thin copy paper color of the irises, predation marks, condition of sexual organs. Yes, all that remains now is to fill those forms and hand them to people. Fines for wrongdoers, interview requests for bad guys, and field autopsies to dead guys. The rest of the stinking cellulose is much worse for wear. Being sandwiched between the board and the rest of the paperwork must have spared the fragile cop. The acidic stench of rotting food is rubbed. Why are you bullying oh, this Kuno guy? Kid? Just because he's a deaf guy? Yeah! The kingdom of Kuno! The fuck do you want with it? 
Yeah, Kuno doesn't know shit about that. That shit is beneath Kuno. Listen, listen. Kuno doesn't care about this small time shit. Kuno could hook you up with some sweet rags. Shit like Kuno's wearing. Your size, good price, 500 real. Look, Kuno ain't seen shit lying around, except for that shit up there. Now, you want performance gear or not, Grandpa? The lieutenant remains silent, but his expression couldn't say, I told you so. Whatever. Kuno was trying to help you, but you're too fat for fun anyway, pig. Look at that fucking shit. You're trying to get Kuno killed. Fuck does Kuno know? The lieutenant takes a quick note. It's a trap! That's just some shit roofing gimps left behind. He's hiding something. Pig, if Kuno was hiding something, it would be hidden. But it is not hidden, is it, sire? You picked up on it. You should examine the pile of roofing material again. Don't know. Kip Das Gardener used to work there. Kip is a pejorative term used to describe people of South Seminese or Eri Oppergeit descent. It used to be a common first name among the Eri Oppergeits of... Yeah, that's what Kuno said. She couldn't handle the heat, so she took off. Kuno can take it. <sighs> shit, nothing to Kuno. Look, Kuno doesn't explain shit. Kuno just says shit. Yeah, her. What was she doing in the greenhouse in March, anyway? What kind of gardening is done in March? Fish is sometimes used to fertilize the soil a few weeks before planting something. Maybe she was preparing the garden. Yes, it seems suspicious. You don't like things being like that. Suspicious. Don't be wondering about Kuno's shit, pig. Yes, yes, absolutely, absolutely. Why the f Yeah, whatever. Kuno doesn't give a shit. Kuno doesn't fucking care. Kuno, the pig's getting pretty close to me. Come to snuff my shit. Looks like it's time for me to go, Kuno. Pig's come to take me in. I'm going away for a long, long time, Kuno. What's going on there? Fuck are you trying to pull, pig? What's this kid shit? Fucking mind games. I'd rather die than squid. Get the fuck out of here, face. An inconspicuous pile of the roofing material, Etonite. Because there's a secret door hidden behind the panels hey, of Etonite. I don't know why you're so enthusiastic That's what. about it. There it is. You see a shabby little door. What is this, Dan? A tool shed? Let's investigate. Yeah, it's a. Yeah, I told you, it's a really good game. I think you'll like it a lot. Yeah, because you read for the plebeian masses that watch the video. Yeah. with your brain. Investigate. Because he's a literal child.
Yeah, so... Yeah, that's why I said don't hit the child! <laughs> yeah. This is why um, uh, I can- this game continued my trend of not hitting children, which is a very bold- uh, bold- um, uh, uh, based off how people talk about video games. Yeah, or like complaining that the game doesn't let them like, uh, murder children enough, and it's like, why do you want to murder children? That's kind of sus, don't you think? <laughs> yeah. I caught you could start like um, uh, having delusions that you're like uh, a, a, a superstar and not just a very sad person. <laughs> um, I don't remember. I never needed money in this game, is what I'll say. Yeah, I know, I mean, I never needed to go out of my way to try to do any of the, like, get more money things. Yeah. I don't know what the result of punching the child is, because as I've stated, I'm pretty against punching children. <laughs> I don't know, Worm punched him. <laughs> the abortion master himself. <laughs> What? Mm hmm Well, I mean, um, uh, basically the more points you have in a thing, the more it, like, chimes in. So that's why Encyclopedia is coming up. The Encyclopedia also just comes up, like, a lot out of these things. So. Yeah, it's it's basically your explain the lore skill. Yeah. But yeah, basically the more points you have, the more likely they are to chime into various conversations. So. Would not. I, as a person, hate women, so. Yeah, women. <laughs> for, for child labor. <laughs> I, I am baffled at the level of because I when I said they were the game was fully voiced I didn't realize and then it was no when they said fully voiced they meant full voiced the fucking mirror was voiced Daniel 
<laughs> the beer was voiced and the mirror was voiced when they said fully voiced. Damn, they meant fully voiced. Yeah, they're all high effort. Why won't any of you people talk, you stupid fucks? You all mute or something? You, I mean, it does have a lot of dialogue. Cause... Here's the thing is, it's shorter than a lot of RPGs, but it has doesn't have combat. It doesn't have combat, and that's like fully half your playtime in most RPGs, so... I don't know, I didn't go with Thor- I, I didn't have very high authority, okay? I don't know, you're a bit too white. <laughs> Yes, the game has very good writing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Why, why, why are you all talking? Why are you all being? Whoa, stop! Don't, don't call me cringe. No. <laughs> stop! Stop! Oh, I lost my gun. <laughs> what? Yeah. <laughs> it didn't even occur to you that you should have a gun. <laughs> so it's like, wait, where, wait, ask him if you, wait, ask if he lost his gun. You're like, oh wait, I'm supposed to have a gun. <laughs> oh no. It's fine. Uh, is it, uh, you'll get it back. I don't know. Maybe. I don't know about. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If you make your personality one-dimensional, like, you just have one thing that entirely defines who you are.
Yeah. Yeah, it's literally just, hey, don't be a one-dimensional asshole. <laughs> It's like, I am strong. I'm gonna define myself by being strong. No, I should need to watch a Vaddy video video to understand if the game has themes. <laughs> It's a game that's well written, and it's um, uh, it's a game that assumes you as the person playing it are an intelligent person who will understand what it's saying. But yeah, I mean the people who made it were like uh, are leftists, so. but they're not from America, so you know. They're also from a. I believe that the people who made this are like either Estonian or Latvian. It's one of those Baltic countries I can never tell apart. Yeah. So the it's a leftist. Per, yeah, it's leftist. Um, uh, leftism from a post-Soviet um, uh, republic, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Good. I like it. I think it's really good. <laughs> you mean because it works? <laughs> 